Hello, and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Podcast. This is the back of the bus session. Hello and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Back of the Bus Sessions podcast. Today I really am buzzing because I've got an old mate with me, Sam McDowell. Yeah. yeah. Sam. Hey, old mate. How long's it been? Uh, <laughs> Five years? Yeah, because you no. pretty much were left Codner, didn't you, to do your own little ventures. I still, yeah, three, you, four years. I'd say four years. You carried on playing for a bit, footy. Yeah, I did. And then I did the music video with you. Yeah, you P-I-C. did actually, yeah, over the old you, which actually still, um, a lot of people still share I, it and stuff. I share it. I watch me. it a lot. Yeah, me, uh, me I'm really proud of it. Yeah, you should be, because um, other week, uh, saying that about music, um, me babby, um, my youngest, Noah, he listens to all my music on CDs in cars. It's, it's like not embarrassing. It's good, it's good, but I'm not, I, can't, I don't want to hear my voice. And uh, yeah. Uh, I says, all right, watch this then. I've done a proper music video. Because he get, he's getting into music. So nice. I showed him and he was like, sat looking. He was like, who's done this? Like, I'm oh, like, it's mate. me, it's me. And then my mate, Mikey. Yeah. Markham, like, he's, he's done it. So um, Scratch, Scratch Productions has done it next to, and all that. You know what I mean? So obviously he plays it now daily. It so, was from Scratch, wasn't it? it yeah, was yeah, like... Scratch Productions <laughs> or something. You just, you, yeah. or something he says on ending. You just, yeah, um, you, you fell actually at that right time is <laughs> where I've started to now end up being at the other side of your table. Which you'll obviously find out when we oh, speak I'm about it. Oh, I'm looking forward to the journey of this, mate. Yeah, because, yeah, you got in touch and said, listen, what had you seen? Had you seen one of the episode clips or anything like that? Or Yeah, it's not just... just yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen, like, a variety of people and then, obviously, they've come on and spoke about themselves. And yeah. then I think, oh, I, like, I relate to that. But even though they don't look my... Um, I don't want to generalise, but, like, my way of life. Do you understand okay, what you I mean? mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, like, we're totally different opposites of... Can be, yeah, yeah definitely. Like tracksuits and tops and stuff. I'm, you're and a bit my, baggy. my socks, yeah, yeah, shall I get them on? Like the... <laughs> yeah, get them on, go on, show them. Please, just show them. Trust me, folks, you know that I've got some funk going. Oh, I I, do you know what I will? Wait, I wait, absolutely wait, love them. Here we go. Funk. Yeah. Oh, oh me, me calves and me hamstrings have gone. <laughs> yeah, so, I miss football. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's start us off then. Go on then. Like, your life. Yeah. What was it? From a podcast, you uh, do you want to go everywhere with it? Do you yeah, want to start yeah. us off from naught and take us along the journey? Because you've sent me a long message, yeah. and there's a lot to chew at, right? Yeah, you 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 fire your so, questions. I can answer. Okay, I, and do you know what I love about football is you just turn up. Yep. And there's a there's a language, isn't there? We yeah. all get one another. We can be from any path of life, any walk, and you just like. We're here for this common unity. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I love about football. So I always liked you. We got on, yeah, yeah, had a laugh, but I didn't know much about your story. And then when you said, "Mikey, can I come on a podcast? I feel I've got something to tell," yep. and sent me all that through, I felt quite emotional. <laughs> I felt like, wow, in a way, like you don't know people necessarily, do you? You yeah, think yeah. you know people. So are you are you saying to me just layman's terms? Because like for viewers and everything, I'm yeah. one of them people who have to get me on Need head. layman's terms, um, yeah. Sometimes I forget, so I'll ask you, what did I just say? Just It's just who I am. Um, so are you, how do I, just explain again what you, what you would. So what I'm saying is I was at football. I thought so I built you, a yeah, character yeah. of you up. But I didn't really know you. Yeah, so basically, did you say, oh, is he not a dickhead, but is is that how he acts, but then not actually knowing who I was really as a person? Is this what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, right, yeah. Just, yeah. Like, I knew you through football, having a laugh. That was where we were at. But mm. then you saying, I want to come share this story. And then I, I've seen lots of elements of this story. I think, wow, how much do you really know somebody when I'm around them? So I'm looking forward to going into it today in your journey. Yeah, go for it. Start us off then. At like literally naught to five. What? Where are you? What naught to five years? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically living a good childhood. Um, my mum, from what I knew, she were before she got pregnant with me. She was going to do something in military, RAF. Got pregnant with me. She went through a blood transfusion, which I think were more than one. Uh, full steps delivery, nearly a day really in labour. Could have gone other way. Do you know what I mean? And then um, from basically from my childhood, what I can remember. And I'm going to say this because a lot of people do this. Is mm-hmm. uh, when you're a child, you think the worst happens to you. You fabricate stuff. Over the years, I've just started to learn that. Yeah, I did fabricate that, but I didn't. It was sort of when I was around eight mm. that she met this guy. 
he ain't getting no names mentioned. I get you. And he, he sort of met this guy because um, when I was born, my dad left. I think I was about three months old. And then my mum fell in love with um, a man called Patrick, mm -hmm. who then had twins with my mum, who were my twin sisters. And then they sort of split up when my sisters were around three, what I can remember. So that would have put me about five. Maybe I'm wrong here. Mm -hmm. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? So yeah, I, yeah, my yeah. vaguest memories of my life, going down the how I want to say it, or my opinion in it, is sort of eight. When she got with a lad, um, she turned to drugs. Okay, so you, you would say, quote-unquote, you had a fairly normal upbringing from naught to five then? Yeah, as far as I can remember. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah as it's far quite as a I've vague been told, yeah. story, but you would go, there was love in the household. Yeah. It was... Quite an uh, yeah, a nice childhood, but then getting to you're talking eight now. There's somebody been introduced into the household that yeah. you're going to deem as not a safe character. Hey, I would yeah yeah generally would say yeah hundred percent Mark yeah, yeah. no I'm I'm trying to defend him then bullshit yeah. isn't it yeah uh, yeah well he came into mum's life made mum happy don't get me wrong, but how I see it and cut along uh, like through the story is the ecstasy like nineties ecstasy I want there no more in the relationship, mm. in the drugs they were taking. Right, okay. So I seen it, like, the parties and stuff. It was all fun at the time, but didn't realise that that was having an everlasting effect on me. How was I was maturing as a child? I couldn't speak to no one. My, like, my mum would be in bed in daytimes. Pardon me. I'm not saying I'd get my sisters up and cook and clean for them, but that's how it felt some days. Mm. I'm not saying, I might have just made them toast, but to me, I've cooked them a Sunday dinner. Dude, Do you understand what I mean? Like, it's a huge responsibility. Yeah, yeah. At like, what age? About eight, ten. Mate. Yeah, about 96, yeah. I would be eating worms in the garden, so <laughs> you definitely... I was doing that as well, <laughs> with my mates climbing trees and stuff. Because yeah. um, we lived at a place called Stone Broom, so if you know Stone Broom, yeah. you'll know. So it's a bit, where you are here, it's a bit rural, for yeah. Ripley, do you know what I mean? It's out in sticks a bit. <laughs> Climb trees and do stuff like that. I used to have a laugh and stuff, and yeah, wait, I just used to think it were normal. Do okay. you know what I mean? Until one day when I got back from school, or about... Yeah, I'd say 10, 96, Oasis, um, come out, I can't remember what it is now, it's just gone off the top of my head, song come out, and it was, one of my, I think it was, mate. And really? It was one, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was a single song, it was one of them charty songs, what they brought out, I can't believe, my lad's going to kill me for this and all that, Riley, sorry, bro. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, one of them songs come out, and it used to be like my favourite song, and then I come home one day, and uh, I take it now, I understood they didn't have um, the drugs at the time, so they was arguing, and then mm. I seen him beat my mum up. Oh, okay. So it changed from them being a happy relationship, being together on drugs, to turning now into a sour relationship on drugs. Mm. And even though... At it's the like everything's heightened with drugs, isn't it? It's either if you're having the best times, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all heightened. But then when you're in your worst states, it's all heightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. takes you even further. Yeah, so even though my mum was still taking drugs, she wasn't like a proper drug addict on it, wanting it, wanting it. Yeah. She was still trying to be a mum, which she was. Um, But it's just... It wasn't nice to see, do you know what I mean? Like My mum couldn't defend herself against him because by this time he, st he got himself into uh, steroids. Oh, it's quite a so he's, he's fella then as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, so he, he got, he's got himself quite big. Do you know what I mean? I tried to help my mum. To me, I went in there and I would, can, I would walk. I'd beat him up. No, one. I went in there and tried to help. I'm going to get swung back at. Do you understand? Did you? Like, yeah, yeah, of course I did a few times. Do you understand what I mean? So, can you remember your mental state at that age then? How, if you knew they were coming home, were you just praying they were in a good atmosphere? More, no. Okay. I was more praying that he was in a better mood for my mum. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? It wasn't so much, because your mum's your mum. Yeah. Your mum's going to be your mum. She's not going to, God rest her soul, but she's not going to change who she is. She brought me into this world. It's her right to tell me right from wrong, not me to tell her right from wrong. Of course. But it was just upsetting for me because I, I didn't grow up with a dad. So I thought that were a dad. That's what dads are. You mm. know how you perceive back in the day, men weren't supposed to speak, and that's why I'm here 20 years later. But mm. the, that's how it was perceived to me. Do you so. understand what I mean? So, oh, he's just being a dad. He's just being hard. And did he put yourself, did he put you in that position? Was he like, you don't talk to me like that? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, wow. Oh, yeah. Mate. I got some shivers just Yeah, then. like, generally, <laughs> like, cut a long story short, he might not have said that sentence, but yeah, yeah I won't be turning around and saying. You knew your position, your yeah, hierarchy. Yeah, 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 wow, okay. Right. So, and does this give you a certain look towards drugs now? Do you 
hate them? Did you always repel them as a young person? Or then did you get curious about them at some stage? Um, see, this is like, I, I do uh, smoke cannabis, but mm-hmm. I do smoke cannabis now. I used to put fun on it and mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but I do now because I struggle to sleep. Yeah. And like, I get insomnia and stuff, and, and it is the only thing, which is it, it's embarrassing to say or anything like that. And this is where I'm at now. Do you understand what I mean? I'm getting to that stage now where people around me who will eventually I will speak about, they're ones who are helping me push me in the right direction to turn it away. Because I, instead of drugs, um, like smoking weed, that's it, um, it was alcohol. I was drinking yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot. Of Why is cheap. that not seen as a really dangerous drug when you really look at the statistics and what it's doing to people? Yeah, yeah, that's, like, like, that's yeah. why I cut that out first. That's how I seen it, that but it's just drinking funny in, alcohol. In society, like you said, you do weed and alcohol, but alcohol to most people is sort of this, oh, yeah, alcohol's alcohol. It's yeah, you got me in loads of trouble. Through the that. government, we're allowing that. So, oh, alcohol's just that. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, it's, yeah. for some people when they hear weed, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you what? And it's just, again, stigmas and perceptions and adults being told what to do. Th- yeah, yeah, there's loads of people. I could bring yeah. I could bring 50 people in here and 20 on them. You wouldn't even know who did it. And that's yeah, not just yeah. saying that they're going around buying it. That's generally they use it because they need it. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? So yeah. I'm, I, no, I, I find it a fascinating topic <laughs> of conversation. I think it's important just to not judge people. And mm. again, if they're living their lives and not hurting other people. I really don't care what they're putting into their bodies. But when it comes to that human introduced yeah, yeah, into totally your household, he was damaging people's life around. So maybe he needed to be a bit more thoughtful about what he was putting into his body. Yeah, especially him not being a biological father to any of yeah. as well. He should have had that bit more recluse. Do you understand what I mean? But then you've got to also, no disrespect, I love my mum, but you've also got to put her in this bracket because yeah. she could say see ya. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Because then what happened, well, basically after that, is my mum did give him an ultimatum. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to stop this. I'm going to move away from uh, Stonebrew. That's how we got to South Normanton. So it was like, oh, they packed up drugs and we moved from um, Stonebrew to South Normanton. And then what happened was, basically two years in the march, my sister died. Wow. Outside my house. May I ask how? Um, so... When I was at Stonebrew, I had already gone to secondary school. So I was 14 at Millennium. This is when we moved up to Fingy. So I was already going to year eight. So I'd left the school because I was being bullied. Mm-hmm. And then basically I had a fight and he was just like, new, new place, new start, new school. Yeah, let, let's do it. Let's not just go back to that school. So I went to Mortimer Wilson's at Ulfton. My sisters, have got, they went through Glebe, which mm-hmm. is the infant school at the time we was at, at, at South Normanton. They went to uh, Frederick Gent secondary school. So we were at separate schools. When they come out, my house was on the main road, across the road from the shop in South Normanton on Church Street. My bus got off outside, like a Trent bus. I got off as my sister was going in the shop. And so I, twin sister, like, um, so I went in the shop with my, like, uh, dinner money, mm-hmm. just to get some drinks and what have you not. Walked in, seen her, what you buying? She was more like a tomboy, we had a wrestle, kick and stuff. Oh, I've got to get some bread or something for my mum, for mum. And so, all right, wait then, because I'm just getting this and I'll come out. And then basically what happened was, we were fighting and she shoved me at the door and there were like a potato stack at the door. And I slipped in and she ran through the door of the shop, ran out, and there were a, a van and a car. And she ran straight through. And I seen a guy at corner at peripheral vision, if, mm-hmm. I, was, if, if I said it right. Yeah, you have <laughs> nailed it. Good word today, lad. Yeah, yeah thanks, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, he come out of peripheral vision, and um, obviously I shouted her, and she stopped in the middle of the room. Oh, bro. And he hit her. Wow. Yeah, and then... You witnessed all that. Yeah, so then what happened? Well, when he hit her, and, and this is mad, but I always say this, and I was, I don't know why I have a smile on my face saying it, but I, it was one of them awkward smiles, but he jumped off and tried to catch her, you know? Like a superhero. Honestly. You did? No, he did. He did? Off the bike when he hit it. Oh, wow. Jumped off to try to catch it. Little did he know, like, like his nose and his helmet hit back her head and then landing on it. She obviously was shaking up mood. She oh. pretty much nodded on mood. Wow. A passerby paramedic. Um, he stopped road. He got out, saved her. Um, ambulance come, which should have come a lot longer. I'm gonna. I'm probably lying now about time, but it was like an hour, mm. forty-five minutes, an hour. That they should have just been there. They wow. There was nothing they can do really. Basically, just Mate. shut down, innit? it. You're fourteen at this point. 
Uh, I was 16, so it was two, I moved up at 14. It was two years in the March, as we moved up in the January two years before. So and I was 16, just 16, which makes it worse. So she would have been 13 the month later. Oh, mate. So, you you know, life at school, how is it? How, your mentality and everything, because you've got this not very kind human in your life. You've not gone into too much detail, but there's a lot of aggression in your life. Mm. School, you're getting bullied. We're painting a picture here. Yeah, yeah. And then you get to 16 and you have a massive moment of tragedy like this. Yeah. Is your mind all over the... In shatters? Are, yeah. are you... Yeah, yeah how are you? Yeah, I started to realise that. So, so from year seven, when I say that, I moved to year eight. Yeah, and then I went to Mortimer Wilson's for them two years, and then obviously I'll ring year six. Uh, yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Year 11, sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, not year six. Year 11. <laughs> um... Benjamin Button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so I'm in year 11. So then obviously, when I moved from Tivshelf to Mortimer Wilson, I had that attitude as if somebody steps on my toes. Yeah. They don't know me. So fuck you. You're in protection, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I went into that school, yeah. they obviously come my way. I just stuck it at them. Okay. And then thought, Oh, that's how you're supposed to be. Do you understand what I mean? I'm not saying I went through school and I like, oh, this man in school, because I wasn't. No, I get you, though. Do you know what I mean? I just stuck gotta... up for myself, made sure nobody were on my toes, and then just got on with life. But, yeah, now looking back, have you just asked that question about how I was in finger? I think I went through school in a cocoon. Did, did you have any people that were good, that were adults, and could look towards you and help you out? What, me being peers at school, or do you mean adults outside school? Adults in and outside of school, anywhere, because, again, you're saying there wasn't much help surrounding you, and you're figuring out life, and there's just basically a load of shit being thrown at you in every direction. So first made major help that really come into my life. Yeah. So obviously, you, like you'll say, you can pull stuff back. You're quite good at this, Mike. Like I say, I'll forget <laughs> stuff, mate. That's you fine, we'll me? keep and going into it. You'll pull it back to me and stuff. Yeah. So ma- major ones I've got is my wife. Who I'm still with, um, God the rest, God she put me in the ground. She should bless her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mild work sometimes. We we mental health and stuff. Yeah, she's been around. Basically, when my sister died, our I see it is uh, I shattered into a million pieces. Yeah. She didn't hesitate. She just picked Bassie up and she collected every piece and glued me back from here to toe. What? So you? How long have you been with this lady for? No, uh, I've been with our carry since school. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, were you together when your sister died? Uh, no, we was um, we got together when I was eighteen. We went out with each other when I was fourteen, and then. So you've always known her, though. Yeah, yeah. This is really. awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So Kerry, she's obviously you go girl. <laughs> <laughs> you've tamed the beast. The boss lady. Yeah, <laughs> that's what she's known in our house. Um, yeah, so she's a part of McDowell Manor Wheels, and um, she's the reason why I've got three kids who shot dad. She, she is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then on the other side is in my childhood, I learned to grow. And find that I've only really got one family member who's married, and they've both got a kid each, um, who came back into my life after my uh, like, just before like my sister died. Because what happened was, mm. my mum went to jail for beating a, a woman up, saying that she would do it, selling drugs to kids when we used to live in Stonebury. We swapped houses like a mutual swapping council. Yeah? yeah, yeah. So she went up and beat her up, and she got sent down for it. Well, then in that time, my sister. Um, said that this this guy who my mum went out with who beat her up at Stone Room the guy who I'm on about yeah um, sexually assaulted her mm. so mm. my mum was in jail at the time and then obviously both sisters are alive at this time it's like when I first moved to Mortimer Wilson's so I'm year 8 year 9 mm-hmm. so then obviously my mum's in jail when he's done this living with us taking care of me and my sisters and then after when he's got mum's got out, she's told him. Then basically what my mum did is ran me Aunt Sarah. So me Aunt Sarah got back in touch. So me Aunt Sarah dropped everything, come back round. But little did I know, I didn't I used to think, why is me Aunt Sarah not there? Do yeah. I mean she'd come and see me on my first day of school, like travel from where she used to live at Derby in, in the morning, sat in a van just to work, see me walk by and wink at me. Mm. I used to think, Can't be you. What what what's happening? And then basically I, I found out that through my auntie, and my mum admitted it before she died, it's like, my aunt Sarah comes to my mum's house at Stonebroom, mm-hmm. and basically her boyfriend told her to tell my mum to tell her to go away. Right. Yeah, so he made her, you know, my, do you get my mum had to tell her own sister, fuck off? Yeah, I get you, I get you. Do you understand what I mean? So they, I didn't see my aunt Sarah for a bit, 
I'm with you. I mean, you said something interesting then as well. You said, what's happening? Was that in your mind a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's constantly happening. When you were yeah. growing up, you were seeing people come home from raves and in parties. Yeah, I'd have like 10 people off, in my house, mate. Yeah, so you're off, they're off the reds. You're such a young person. Uh, you're literally this really aggressive man's in your household. You don't know what <laughs> energy is going to be in. Your sister dies. I can just imagine this young lad just growing up constantly in a phase of what next? What's happening? What yeah, do yeah, I do? Yeah, I will, I will like that, yeah. We are? Yeah, all the time. Okay. But then, like, like say, like, me and Sarah and her wife, June, they're yeah. a massive, massive part in my life. And like, Sarah, and, your and June, wife, uh, and Her Carrie. wife, June. Yeah, yeah, my wife. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a massive part. Becky and Joe, who is Joe's, Sarah's son, and Becky is June's daughter. They're a massive part of my life. Do you know what I mean? When I've been got arrested and stuff... They've actually bailed me out. They haven't gone against me. Do you know what I mean? They've actually been there with open arms through it all, like majority of my life. You know what I mean? And can you just think of some things of what they equipped you with, like in terms of the way they were towards you? Because we work with loads of young people yeah. down here and some of them aren't from the best areas, aren't from the best backgrounds, have had many moments of tragedy in their lives and big struggles. And that's why I'm so fascinated right now in this story because, yeah, I've, I went through my own struggles yeah, yeah, yeah. in life as we've all been through but these are are, are big moments yeah, right yeah. they're like sledgehammer moments and i work with those type of young people so for me to better understand them yeah and to be better help them it would be really cool to hear what the adults in your lives provided you with and were, were just there for you were they really like just sort of assuring you yeah. things are going to change you're going to be yeah, okay no yeah. So um, we we'll go about my auntie first. Um, auntie's just, and then I'll say this. Uh, I said this the other day, actually, we're in a little deep because I, I said that I was coming to do this. So we had a little deep uh, discussion just about us, do you know what I mean? About herself, about me. Just awesome. Totally different. We do it all the time. Brilliant. Um, I told her the other day, um, my mum, uh, my mum, I love her to be, it's God rest her soul, but my auntie's done more yeah. for me than my mum has. Do you understand me? So she's not just there. She's just my mum in it. If I need uh -huh. ring up, I need money, she's got it. If I need you to bail me out, meaning I need you to come to my house to tick these um, I's and dot these, whatever. So yeah. I've done it wrong way, T's and you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I need oh. you to be here. She's there. Do you understand what I mean? Like, okay. I can go up there and say to her, it's never going to happen, touch one, because you never say never. But if I murdered somebody, I get you. I'd be the first person to go to because she wouldn't judge me. She wouldn't kick me out of her house. She'd be like, right, Sam, this is what we've got to do. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> give me, she's, she's like, give me the context. Yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. she's like my, <laughs> like a mum. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? But no, she's my you, auntie man. at the same time, which yeah. has got to be hard because I've lost my sibling and she's also lost her sibling, which is my, obviously my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Of course. June, and, there's, and legitly, June, she's a legend, mate. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, but she's my honest opinion. So if I do huh. anything wrong or right or good, and I ask her, if she, even if I think it was brilliant scoring at Attrick, and yeah. I said that I didn't do any work, right? And I asked her, and I said to her, oh, told her about the game. What do you think about me playing today, June? Or she watched, just say. She she would say, don't matter about it's going for your goals, you can work for your team. Uh. She's one of them for me. Do you understand what I mean? Like, if I say to you, have I let you down? Mm. And she said, no, you've not let me down, but you know that you're better than that. That's it. She checks your blind spots. Yeah, and then if I oh, have let her down. That's cool. Yeah, and if I have let her down, she'll either blank me, huh. or she'll say, yeah, you have. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Like, that, that's what I needed. In my life, do you know, Real like talk. yeah, yeah, just straight John Bull. There's no, there's oh, no yeah. fabricating with them. Do you know what I mean? It's like that's it. I'm, I'm wanted there. Do Raw you know and I mean? authentic and honest selves. Yeah, yeah. I'm this definitely, is where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm no one wanted there. Do you know what I mean? I can turn up any time. Well, and was that a feeling throughout your life? Like not feeling valued, not feeling wanted, not feeling yeah, enough? yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, okay. I go through that a lot. Yeah, now, but like I. I like, I'm not saying I start arguments with Kerry, but today we had a discussion and a dispute because I'll be in Marty. Because yeah. I'm like, I can, do you all appreciate me? Do you know what I mean? Like, going through a little thing on my own, do you know mm. what I mean? And mm. then, like, Kerry's like, yeah. Like, why Why you don't need to be keep being told? But, like, I do. Mm. Uh, Must be thing, odd. <laughs> I've got a question lurking. You're a bloody good footballer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my eyes, mate. When Thank I any time I've seen you on the pitch, I'm, I'm good at putting it in there, dude. You yeah. and that's what you're there for, right? You're the striker. Was that a consistency through your life that sort of gave you a bit of a respite and a bit of a, a breathing space? Yeah. So, so earlier, I was, 
when we were talking about football, yeah. about Codner, right? Yeah. A lot of people at Codner thought all I wanted to do was score goals, 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 goals. Yeah. Right? That's all I care about. As a about. striker. Yeah, I'm a striker, <laughs> right? I want to score goals. My yeah. name's not Jamie Vardy for nothing. Yeah. Las Vegas, <laughs> I'll gamble and get this and that. I'm <laughs> thingy. What well, little do these people know at Codner and all these people who were with me, like yourself, the mm -hmm. main, the, the best thing that I've got from there, what's shown me about this football, is my five year award. I've never ever been able to stick at anything. Mm. If you look at my career online, I've been at a team for two, three years, then left. Moved, moved, and moved. And moved, yeah, moved, yeah. moved. So my, my trophy that I've only got up in my football from being anywhere is the one from Connor saying that I was there for five years. <laughs> so it shows me that, yeah, you can stick at stuff. You can do it. So all these goals are win me 15 trophies behind what I've scored right. and that. They're lovely, and it's nice for you, Mikey, to say you're a great footballer. You are, mate, yeah. When I look at it, that's just me showing you as a teammate. That's who I am as a teammate. But the real person inside of me Hmm. Think once you ought to say he's, he's give you five year. Yeah, but you they didn't know my story. I'm with so you. I'm expecting you to just jump in my life and say, boom, I understand why I used to turn up to football and sit like that. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to I used to think like people would have banter and I wouldn't have banter with that joke. Do you know what I mean? And mm. how people come up sectoring in life. Of course, the, they've not travelled a mile in your shoes, right? Yeah, and I haven't theirs. Yeah, do you I get what you. I mean? I, I perceive things different to they do. Mm. Uh, uh, but but uh, like, was it in your life in your younger years as well? Football. I know yeah. you're not stuck to stuff, but yeah, just that was a picture I had in my head of you. I Somebody just, that had always been sort of you've got something with you. I I'll just play. I started playing football when I rally were two months. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Fair. Because I had no dad or like, I, I didn't know what to do. I want I want that good. Do you know what I mean? Like when I first started, like thanks to Rob, Rob Fazakli and all if you listen to this, at Andrew, cheers pal. Because I was crap. I was crap. Mm. Like really crap. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And they gave me a chance. And what I did is I noticed that I wasn't technically good. I wasn't strong enough. I was quick. And I knew that I anticipated things better than other footballers did. They didn't think that ball would go through that guy's leg and fall on penalty spot for me to tap it in. So what I did is I made sure I did that. Ah. Hence why I went away with 30 goals a year. Because if you look at all my goals, Mikey, and this is no word of a lie, I'd score five decent goals, rest of them would be in box, tapping it yeah. <laughs> But That's what I did, honestly. Like, through your story, man, you had to be good at reading situations. Yeah, that, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, it sounds like that's part of your superpower now, is working out what next. Oh, I appreciate uh, that. Mate, you, you use it. But interesting in there, you said as well, you didn't have a dad in your life. Can you think of some things that are some traits that have gone into your life because of not having a dad like yeah you were saying go on then you're nodding yeah, a lot I'd, so I'd, you just take the take I the mic lad <laughs> <laughs> no yours. i do i do i do think yeah you're right there i do i don't think i'd have been as good a parent with having a dad if that's really? just my, yeah yeah because just who i am in my own head and stuff mm. i would have gone down the extra path knowing for well I've got my dad to rely on mm. I want I put myself now in a bracket where I want to prove to myself that I can be a dad wow without be, that, having a that dad that is a great answer do you understand I what do I mean? snippets of this podcast and that's going in there <laughs> <laughs> no that that's a really cool thing I've never heard anyone yeah, so, articulate or say so if I ask I you a, if I ask you a question now brother to brother yeah. yeah what is what is your main soul that you want from like this world what do you want my main objective in, yeah, in this you, world. It's like some people's money. So I want to, um, I, I've got my life purpose is lighting paths. Right. Uh, and that means sort of anybody that I meet, I want to be a good energy in their life. So it's lighting a room up in a way yeah, yeah. and connecting people. So if two of my friends connect, that's a path that they didn't see before. And that moves on. And I want that for young people, all people. But well, you're doing that. Uh, I'll tell you, you're doing that. <laughs> thank really. you, No, man. you are. Because you see it all the time. No, and generally, like, I'm not talking on a podcast or in front of a camera or what I see, what you do on TikTok or anything. Like, I'm generally talking what I've seen you at football, how you speak to people. Oh, cheers, and man. And you talk. If you've got a friend, you'll say, hey, Sam, this is da da da. Yeah. And you yeah. introduce me. You're not just goodbye and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that means a lot. And it, it yeah, kind of. So we're you're not doing my goal. story today, but yeah, it came from so my main pain. Goal. Yeah, so, so my main goal, mate, <laughs> legitly, I've passed my main goal. I know for a fact I have, right? Go on because then. I I want my children to be ten times pe better people than I am. <laughs> I so love I've got it. I've got a nineteen and a sixteen year old who at <laughs> the minute are better men than me. They oh, are. this is a good part of the chat. Do you understand what I mean? Know then I've why. got an eight year old that I can say another eight year and we'll say thing, but I guarantee you'll just do the same. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Because my eldest. 
and and it's nothing to do with I love all my kids the same. Yeah. Some parents say they've got a favourite because the first were born. Some mums say that. Not in an horrible yeah, text. Course, course, people say it. People like, oh, that's my favourite. You know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't got none of them. But my eldest does a lot for my household than I would never have done. I'm not saying yeah. I wouldn't help my mum with bills, but I'd have to be asked. Now my child doesn't. My child would go and get it. So really? if my yeah. mum says, I can't, I don't know, I'll say, oh, I'm going to pub for a pint. And why I forgot, you can't. We've only got money for this and that. I forgot to tell you we have to pay this and that. I'll say, oh, right. Say, oh, do you need it? And she'll say, just a random comment. This has never happened, but yeah, I need it for bread and milk. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, all right. He's gone to the shop, mate. He comes back with it. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And he, and he never like, he never, he never burdens. And he never turns around and says to me like, why can't I have this as a kid? Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's mm -hmm. not, I've asked him. And I've asked him on his own and said to him, well, like, is it because I'm broke? Like, I've, I've only got a dead-end job. Is that now? So you brought me up to, I owe me money. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? So, like, little things like that, Mikey, just like, yeah. oh, it's made me feel nice now. Yeah, it did Do you understand me, what I mean? yeah. And, like, Jacob, middle <laughs> child, who's, who's not got a job, who's struggling at the minute with his own self. He's got to find himself. Because I was at his age once before, getting this finger pointed at me and saying, get a job, get a job, mm. get a job. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? But he's just like me, but he's... He's changed himself. I used to go out and beat people up or mm. have a fight with somebody. He's just like me, mate. He just doesn't do it. Yeah. Why? Because I just don't want to do what you did, Dad. Huh. Do you understand what I mean? It's like, for them children to say that to me, Mikey, yeah. that, that's gone over pride. Yeah. And, and that's me, Dad. That's gone over knowing full well that they that makes me proud that they're telling me this. Do you know what I mean? And that's one, how it comes to me. One thing I'm picking up there is you're willing to be so honest with your children. Yeah. And I suppose... I've even had it in my own life where my parents have sugarcoated a lot of stuff and not told me the truth and I've yeah, had to find yeah, out yeah. a lot for myself. Yeah. But for you to have lived life so much and just said, here's all the stuff I went through, here's some of my lessons, choose what you will, go on with it. What an honest, amazing conversation to have because then they can carve out their own path from that. And I yeah, think yeah. that's what parents could go and do more often. Yeah, they should, just yeah. sit and have them chats with their Young people. Yeah, because <laughs> no disrespect to you, it don't matter about you bringing a child into this world. Yeah. You've got lovely children, mate, but one day they're going to tell you what's right from wrong. Yeah. And they, and you'll have you'll think, hold on a minute, and mm. just say even if you Google it, you're going to sit there and think, shit, I owe them an apology. Mm. I've done that thousands of times, mate. And they generally have thinking, no, you're not right, that can't be right. And I've <laughs> said it to them, gone off on my own, trying to do do my own bio and find out about it and go back and say, you know what, mate, you're right, how did you find that out? Mm. Mm. and then they open you to doorways to different stuff what a lot of adults do now is I'm the adult you're the kid yeah you do as you're told you follow yeah. my rules and that's it and, bro bro broadens a gap doesn't it between you yeah yeah like I can pushes see pushes it away yeah I can see your, your children having a lot of not being angry it'll take them a lot to get angry because <laughs> how they've been brought up like do you understand what I mean like where we're from yeah it's, it's all righty righty Everyone's got to follow this code. Everyone's got, you're all free. You don't, you can wear a pink hat. Your child can wear a blue hat. He can grow mm. his hair, do whatever he's want. You know, like people where we're from. Yeah. I'm not generalizing. I'm just saying like truth. judgment in there. Yeah. You've got to wear nice. Why are you doing that? Yeah. What are you doing that for? What, you've got to wear these. You've yeah. got to wear that. So you put yourself in, you put yourself in your own. In a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely agree. Do you understand what I mean? So, so have you tried to give your children freedom from that box? Yeah, yeah. Like this is something to do it, to show them that. Brilliant. I say to them like, I, I, always, I always think, oh, do my kids sit there and whittle about life? So if I can come on here and sit there and talk about my life, it don't matter if anybody agrees, it's my life. You yeah, know what I mean? it's lived experience. I, yeah, there you go. I, that's how I feel. And Amazing. it's what I've been through. They can press play, can't they, now, forevermore. Yeah. What else makes your kids brilliant? Why are they great people? <laughs> you said just, just a few different um, reasons, what do you, but... but just kind-hearted people. Really? Do you, or do you mean what, they, what they're good at? or what? Or what yeah, like just uh, I love that you said your life purpose was to make them 10 times better the person than you are. are. And yeah, I just wondered what other traits and factors are that for you. You just love... They just remind me of me. Yeah. The older two do. The, do you know <laughs> what I mean? And younger one does as well. But that version you wished you were a little bit as well. Yeah, like, yeah. I wish yeah. I, if, if I could look in the mirror, I wish I could be any three of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Swap incredible. Now. And again, what are some of the reasons that, that you've shown them that you feel they've turned out that way? That we're saying just honest a simple chats. Hug, and... Just a simple hug. Yeah. Do you know, like little things like death yeah. dates and stuff. My children come up and hug me. Yeah. They don't have to be asked and stuff like that. Like they'll come up and say, are you all right today? Little things like that. Like I said earlier, they won't let us struggle. 
some some kids nowadays that's my money i'll keep my money my mum did it they they help if like if i i know for a fact if i can't pay rent my child will try and pay it me mm. and like little things like that down to just how he treats people out in society yeah you know, like if people could piss him off both of them off the eldest two. i say eldest two because he's noah's younger he's mm -hmm. only eight he's mm -hmm. not an adult do you know what i mean so even though he's Figuring one of his, he's out. probably one who will probably tell everybody fuck yeah, up yeah. first, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, they wouldn't. They're not like I'm, I used to be. Boom, straight at it. Okay, Come yeah. here, you. They're they're like, all right, pardon mate, no problem, and walk yeah. off. Where I wish I could be that. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? To be in like in a situation where, let's say, an argument with your sibling. Yeah, you have an argument with sibling. You'd be dead horrible to him. Do you understand what I mean? They never they never apologize. Mm. You know, like when you I go up to him and say that were a bit harsh that law. Mm. you know what I mean I don't say you need to apologise it's a bit harsh that one ten minutes later mate I can guarantee one of them has gone into the other bedroom and gone yeah sorry about that mate do you understand what I mean like yeah. so yeah, I perceive I that dads to me because yeah. not having one dads don't tell you they love you dads don't show you affection dads are hard men dads don't cry that's how it came across to me in yeah, my life so why did you feel did, where did that step come from for you because you are giving that to your kids now so why did that moment happen where you thought, I'm going to think about what I didn't get and give. Because I just wanted it. Yeah, I mean? awesome. And then I got to a certain age, Mikey, where you get to an adult, don't you? 18, 20, yeah. and you think, it doesn't matter if my dad comes in my life now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I can't go and play football with him and get him rolling me over in mud. Yeah, awkward, yeah. that'd it? be a bit weird, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it's going to take a few, by the time, I, say if I met my dad, which I have once or twice, but... I get you. Um, if I met him and I got a relationship, you're waiting five years, I'm 25 now. Okay. Do you understand what I mean? It's like, you're never going to get... It's all yeah. right going for a pint, will you? Yeah. Everybody can get drunk and say you love you. But is he, if he's sat there mm. upside the table 10 years later and says, oh, I love you, mm. I'm going to say thanks. and that it, I love you too. But in back of my mind, I'm going to say, T do you really? Mm. Because where were you? Yeah. It's not my that. fault I was brought in this world. It's your fault. Do you, do you understand what I mean? So I made a... <clears throat> I had no one, Marky. So mm. it comes to, that's how I thought. Do you understand what I mean? So I thought... I'm gonna have kids. I'm gonna have man's heart summit. I'm gonna be. I might not be rich. I might not be the cleverest kid. Do you know what I mean? But I'm gonna have man's heart to be a dad. That's mm. gonna be something that someone who can't take away from me. And the only people who can judge me, and I can really trust this judgment, is me. Is me offspring. Mm. So do you feel quite content in life then and settled because you are living that purpose? You wanted your kids to be your life priority and goal. Yeah. So does that bring settlement to your life? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. But <laughs> as somebody that's been through so much trauma, yeah. if you just bottle all of that up and repress it and hold it down, it compounds. I'm imagining at some point in your life you've had yeah. the destruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've seen it as well. Can we, can we go like, into that? Bit? Yeah, yeah, because like, yeah, like well, uh, seven, eight months ago. Yeah. I, um, I run antidepressants for sleeping and stuff and I just lost my head and sat in the bedroom saying I'm going to kill myself mm. I'm taking all the tablets I had me I Jacob I, when I, I just left I carry knew I wasn't going to do it not that she's saying I'm crying wolf she just knows she knows uh, my mannerisms how I'm going to be if I'm going to be quiet and don't say oh then yeah get him because there's something going off here where I'm just losing my head and I said like, fuck this I'm gone and walked out the door my lad my middle lad which I fucking feel bad for now like, but mm. he was panicking mate yeah. he was like where's my dad where's my dad where's my dad where's my dad do you know what I mean? Foot slapping around Normanton to find me. Do you understand what I mean? And like, I've shouted at my kids and said that, you don't even like me. You're taking piss out of me. You're like, you never tell me you love me. Even though they, they have done and I've done that to them. Do you know what I mean? And I have. And I'm not proud of it at all. So when they hear this, I do apologise. And I have apologised to the face. And I would do forevermore. They just know if they were sat here like that, I know for a fact they just, it's a part of my journey. That's how... I, how I've come to come yeah. to grips with me now. I've come to grips now thinking, right, yeah, you did that in the past. Yeah, you've done that before, Sam. What the fuck can you do now? Mm. Oh, right. You can start by going, writing some stuff on social media. Mm -hmm. You can start by reading up about stuff. Then you can start doing what you think is best for you, a.k.a. turning up today. Not the journey of life, man. Yeah. yeah. Figuring it all out still. Yeah, like I've had, like I've been diagnosed with PTSD years and years ago. I had this mm. counsellor. It just didn't, won't work for me. Yeah. Tablets don't work for me. They make me feel ill and stuff. 
and then I get lazy where sometimes I miss a day or two. And then that's it. You miss I love your, your vulnerability, cycle. mate. I really do love your vulnerability. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's, no, it's wicked, dude. It's wicked. So then I, I do it like do it like that. And then I find like music. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. I do a lot. Passions of, are a big part. Yeah, like I do a lot of rapping to myself. I don't make so much tracks at the minute because my mate who Rob's doing it whiskey stain he's doing really well he's just like oh, he's Rock killing City. it right yeah he's yeah i've been it, seeing his journey yeah everybody give whiskey stain a listen mate yeah. they're popping off mate he's great you know. yeah yeah is so. he a good mate of yours yeah best mate mate and you good at football no uh, <laughs> it's about the same as you no yeah, actually yeah. you're quite good at football yeah, yeah it's about yeah. the same as you mike i'll take yeah, that yeah, thank yeah. you because to me good football is a good like i'm going to put him in pedestal now nah, is both of my lads yeah, I get Because, like, Riley's always played football. <laughs> and then I coached Jacob's team from when he quit boxing and went there. And he only played for a year, but he's just as good as Riley. Nice, In a nice. year's time, you know wow. what I mean? So, yeah. I love it. Um, when did you realise, was it a long process of you sort of just feeling void and, and numb for a while? Or did you have, again, a pivotal moment where you decided i need medicine for this they're not working i need something and just started to slope downwards do you know what uh, yeah yeah what brought a, that on yeah i think i would just like i say i got arrested all the time for drunk and disorderly went to jail um at what age and how long for i went to jail when jacob was nine days old wow so okay. 16 now so we all do it's 2007 anyway yeah i uh, went to jail which um domestic violence I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, I've, I've put from some shit verbally, you know what I mean, and physically as well. Um, but this time, I knew this is where it stemmed from, this is my key. Um, I ran the police. Right. On myself. Mm -hmm. She she was trying to rip the phone out me and say, no, no, don't, 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 don't. I'm like, no, man, I need to, I can't, I can't. I get you. Yeah, like, it's my fault. Well, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, I went to jail for a few weeks, about two weeks, nine days, ten days or something, early release. Mm. And then I'm not saying it come out overnight, it clicked and we we got on with it. It's, it took some graft. Mm. But then when you're saying it now, I feel right bad. Because it's not my graft. But it is my graft. Yeah, you've got to work through it. Yeah, my wife. Yeah. I don't think I'd be here now if my wife wasn't so understanding at times. You understand what mm. I mean? Mm. Like sometimes she might, she might listen to this podcast and think, you're fucking pissed me off today. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I know for a fact she'll listen to it with open arms. She won't judge me on it. Do you understand what I mean? Is so she... you and you said it was graft. How do you graft through that if that is part of your mindset and potency, which it, it can be in anybody? I think yeah, a yeah, lot of same people as... will, they go if they've been through poor childhood particularly and seen it in the households, but it doesn't have to just be that. But we're programmed and wired to protect ourselves. So in that moment of madness, anything can happen. So yeah, yeah. what what is your graft and how do you? See, you I think a graft when you're in depression, I think easiest state is, and yeah. this is easy for me to say it now, and I'm going to be serious, people. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm only just starting to come out of shadows. You can just say that I put one fragment of air coming out. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's this bit. It's just starting it. The stigma of, I did mm. So the talk, having yeah, a conversation yeah. and talking. Sending open, that yeah. message to you, Mark. Yeah. I'm like that, I'm like that, mate. Oh, do, I, do I send it? Do I yeah, not? I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Fuck it. No, respect, you know I mean? dude. Respect. And then when you, when you do, like, positive stuff, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it, I think it's fifty-fifty for me. But I don't, I'm trying to speak of the other side. I think it's fifty-fifty because mm. I only ever feel good when other people tell me. Do you understand mm. what I mean? Yeah, you do. I won't that get validation. No, yeah, like I'll get self gratitude mm -hmm. when I'm talking about it. At the mm. time, I'll be like, "Yeah, that's just I've done it." Mm. Do you understand what I mean? It'll take me a week later to think. Yeah, actually, well done there. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, what did you say before anyway? Because I've just lost it. That's fine, mate. We're, we're, that's how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'll do it once or twice. <laughs> I'm wondering, like, the process of grafting through... That's it. You know, you're going, you've got these demons inside of us, and some people just let them yeah, rule their you. lives. I'm back with you. How are you taming these demons in, in wanting to kill yourself and domestic violence in any of these ways that are detrimenting your life? That's true. How that are you because, taming them? Yeah, that's true. That is because I, like, I'd, say if I got so far like a mile down road, yeah, I'd do something to fuck it up, mm. to put me back to this ground yeah. zero. Do you understand what I mean? So that's a difficult question for me yeah. to answer. So it's uh, like a fear, what, a what, what, fear of success, isn't it? It's a, it's a fear of escaping who you are. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And becoming yeah. something new. I don't think humans we like change that. necessarily. Yeah, that's, so that, yeah, no, yeah. It, it will always drag you back in some aspect. Yeah, or well, yeah, or well, I drag myself back. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think the ultimatum were for me like 
where one of them were my wife. Do you know what I mean? And then when you sat there, yeah. actually being like... Really weighing up your, s- <laughs> yeah, I've only got your situations you, and scenarios. Like, not like yeah. horrible to carry, like, but yeah. like, I've only got you, Anna. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And then she just asked me to change things, like stop drinking. Uh-huh. So that took me a bit of time to do. I just stopped drinking all the time. How often would you drink through the week? Um, back then, fucking hell, every day. I really? Won't work, I won't work in a room. Yeah, I was drinking cheap cider, three litre at a time, like three bottles of lemonade. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, okay. every day, seven days a week. And how clouded was your mind? Yeah, oh yeah, gone, mate. Really? Yeah, fucked off that did. Conversation, you could have any or... You, yeah, you yeah, but tell. then my wife will admit that I a bit more fun. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit more fun. Swings around about. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit more fun wanting to like run around and chase stuff. Now I'm a bit more like, oh, you got to wear it, chill out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I started to change that. So, and then that's when I took that mask, you know, you're taking one blindfold off you. Yeah. You know, like cataracts. It goes in stages, doesn't it? So you start going like that and then squint and then it goes blind, 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 fully blind. I was going reverse back cataracts if you want to do it. Interesting, Taking yeah. one off cool. and then I could start seeing the light coming through. Oh, mate, that's a great metaphor. Do you understand what I mean? Of course, that's a beautiful metaphor. So our, abs, our <laughs> is I'm like... I'm a poet. I like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. I like that as well. So I, I see it like you're in a tunnel, yeah? Yeah. And in depression, right? Don't matter how far you go, yeah? That you only go to middle. It looks like you're going forward, but that light never comes and that light never... Wow. Seems to get smaller. Yeah, it seems loop. to stay the same size. Yeah. It looks like you're going for, forward because yeah. you've had that good day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that brightened up. Next day, it's not. It's back to where it is. Yeah. And what you'll find is. And you look you, behind you and it's the same distance as well. And then you're like, oh, neither way yeah. works. So you doing that? You doing this podcast, doing that music video for me. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Speaking to me at football. You might not believe it. Or football that I've done. Or family people that I've done. You lots dragged me through. Mm. All my family and that dragged me through. I'm the one that's decided to stand up at the end. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that, that's where I think, my opinion. I know a lot of haters out there might say who's going through the same stuff, but mm. they're not haters, but they might have a different opinion to me. I do believe that. I do believe you can't get out of anything without any help. You mm. can't do it alone. It doesn't matter even if you've got no family yeah. and you've come and spoke to you, gone to a mental health worker. And then you've gone to the d- d- courses, you've gone to this, you met this woman or a man or da-da-da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all pull you through. It's your choice if you want to go back or you've you want got to, to take go it, forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what is that help? Have you had, have you had therapists as well down the line and people helping you out? Yeah, I did. But I'm thinking now, when I'm older, I could probably, possibly try it again. But when I was younger, I was so angry and set in yeah. my own ways that, I, no, you're not right, I'm right. You have to want to change, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I find like... Therapists, uh, people that go to counselling or have therapists kind of want them to drag them through it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you find, I can imagine, a lot of young people struggle with it because they're not at that readiness yet. Yeah, yeah, you know, when they say, why did you feel like that? So yeah. what makes you feel like that? Yeah. Do you know just how they did the voice, how they do it? Yeah. What oh, makes quite... you feel like Interesting. that? Interesting. Yeah, a some bit people... Condescending. Don't... Yeah, it? like that's it, condescending. That's yeah. It. Yeah, like that, that... I'd be like, that is a kid across the table. It's think, and then alien. It's gone for me now. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Because I'm angry inside thinking, you're patronising me. I'm not yeah. listening to your questions now. You're, yeah, you're I cunt, totally mate. get that. Do you yeah, understand yeah, that's I where do. I was I at? Do, I get do you understand where, what yeah. I mean? And imagine, yeah, a lot of the young people we deal with go through that experience many times. So I've, I'll do yeah. my therapy now. So say we're in a conversation okay. now and you turn around and say, no, Sam, I don't agree with you. I'm going to say, why? Mm. Then you, you tell me why. And then if I say, no, I don't agree with you, I'm going to keep my opinion. Yeah. But your opinion might change. So like Rob, my, my mate who does Whiskey Stain music, yeah. like I say, give him a shout yeah, out. He's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's popping off, but he does mental health and he works in mental health. Do you understand what I mean? Bro. And he come, when he comes around to my ass, which I absolutely love this, he don't use it on me. He just, he's Robert. Yeah. Even though he'll say, Sam, you're like, he's knew me through years. Yeah, you're a bit <laughs> struggling a bit. Do you understand what I mean? He won't, he won't use it against me. He don't use, he just comes as a mate. Yeah. And then I've said to him, do your work on me. And he'll say, all right, I'll do one thing with you. And he say, what? he say, you try and make me argue with you. I looked at him. Oh, and, yeah, I like and, this. Then, and he says, then I'll do it to you, so you've got to argue with me. He says, all right, then. He says, go, you've got two minutes. Timed it. Yeah. Trying to make him argue. And all he's doing, I'm going to say to you, look at your face. You ain't even got no air, mate. You know, just like in a friendship, just get course, him to argue yeah. back. And he's like, but well, why do you feel like that? Oh, that, that's a nice opinion, mate. You know what? I've never thought on it that way. Mm. Do you know, like, dear, yeah. by end on it, mate, I'd say sorry to him. Within a second, all he turned around and says to me, what's life like without your mum? 
Gone. Uh, Mad gone. You know what I mean? Like, it's ain't. Wow. Yeah, we're done with this. I don't even yeah, want to do it no more. Yeah. Do you want a cup of tea, mate? Yeah. Protections Couldn't up. Do it. Triggers are out. Intre- so, yeah, he's sort of just saying, listen, I love myself and trust myself so yeah, yeah, much yeah. that it doesn't pierce me at all because I know who I am. So, it doesn't matter what you're yeah, putting so, across at me, it's got no effect. So, then over the years now, what I've done is. I've sort of to take that tool. Amazing. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, then, it's a great well, thing. Yeah. I got obviously sent down in 09. Yeah. And then I got, um, I started shouting at Kerry's mum and her sister in um, Chelsea and that and crushed them. You know, pissed outside. Um, ass. So I got, I got, I got caught. Yeah. I had yeah. to go to court. And court says, well, jail's not going to do you any good, is it? It says, obviously, with what your past has gone off, I'm going to put you into a build better relationships course. It's all right then. So I went to this course and it were, Variety of people who do exactly what I did can't deal with the emotions, don't know how to treat people. Not just male or female, just mm. any. Do you know mm. what I mean? Not because I were there for Kerry, domestic violence, three, it was just anything from children to adults. So I went in there and then they gave me something called the Q tool. So it's collect, C for collect the facts, U for how useful are they, and E for evaluate. So if I elaborate on it, it means collect the facts. So everything's facts. So say me and you fall out, yeah? I punch you in the face five times. Da, 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 smashed up this window, did this, did that, yeah. Collect the facts of all them, I'm putting them in. Mm-hmm. Why did you do it? Because you made me angry. You put everything in there. So, do you understand, from my personal thing, mm. so you made me feel like that. Yeah. You did it, it, did it. I put it all in, even if it's negative. Then you sit again with that pot, empty it on your table, on a <laughs> blank table, and collect everything that's useful. So when I say useful, what I mean is, it don't mean it's useful for me, it's useful for the situation. Mm. Was it useful that I punched you in the face five times? No. Take that up. Was it useful that you smashed a window after you punched him in the face five times? No. Mm. You'll find that you'll whittle it down, there'll be a few. Then evaluate it. Mate. And what you'll find out, Mike, is when you do that to yourself in a situation where it's 50 50, you're the problem. F- Mate, you will find out. I've like, never heard this before at all. You will, you will find brilliant. out, like, it will stem down, and my always stem down to anger. Interesting. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what I put in. Two way conversation. You won't listen to other people's opinions. And these kept flashing up all the time. Huh. So wow. then what? And then from there, I've done it like that. Wow. But, well, that's true. Like helicopter tool. I know if you can tell anybody that. Helicopter tool. So that's somebody for me who goes red hot straight away. Sees, sees red. Can be in a big world and go like that into tunnel vision and has to go in his own way. Yeah. Is get on your helicopter. So sometimes, say if we went to football and we was playing and I used to kick off dinner and like take my boot off and start throwing <laughs> yeah. it about and stuff. Yeah. You won't. You'll see me start on pitch like that. Are you doing helicopter tour? Yeah, so what happens is you step out. So that incident, you're fine, right? Looks massive while you're in helicopter. Looks that big while you're in middle on it, while your helicopter's Mm. in the centre. Yeah, so helicopter's in centre of this. Mm -hmm. As soon as you fly up and keep going up and seeing what you've affected, who Mm. you've affected, the community you've affected, the people around you affected, your loved ones, you'll find out that that main point in there is only a bullseye. Wow. You'll find that you're hurting everybody around you. Yeah. And it ricochets that it comes back to you. So it's that sort of play it forward technique as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's just really working out, oh, this affects that and this, and them, and then it gets So you can imagine what I did, didn't you? Yeah. So I were in wow. the helicopter. Yeah, that's right. I felt right. Go up and they were like, fuck community. Fuck that person. They deserve that. When it come up to my kids, oh. they're going to see you go to jail. Yeah. You are my leave. Oh. You started to get it like that. Yeah. So I was starting to oh, mate. come into that boundary. I might have to get you to come and do some workshops, you know. Oh, I'll, I'll do it, mate. Would I'd love to, I would lo- yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'd love to do that. Oh, I've got some people. You, I, I'll be like, they can come up, but I'll be, you're doing that workshop or you're going home. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll do <laughs> that. I, I would do that. I'll stand there and do that. Because oh, I'm dude. quite good. I've got paperwork on that. Well, we do um, a lot of football here as well. So maybe you can yep. break it up with a bit of football and then go and do some That's how I did my stuff. coaching anyway. Yeah. When I used to do coaching, like I used to do certain drills where I'd put like certain players against certain players, not for the physical of it. Yeah, yeah. It's bringing them out of the shell. Yeah, brilliant. They didn't talk to each other, right? You two were together today. Oh, mate, I'll be, I'll be bringing you up. Honestly, yeah, I'll, de- this, I'll this do, is definitely fantastic. do that. Yeah, I love to do it like that. Any other tools and techniques like that? Because I really, I love the story. I love the anecdotes and the the journey that we're talking about. But the practical stuff's really cool, isn't it? And yeah, I've so, not heard of any of this. Yeah, so them two. I can bring it in so you can look behind camera and then you can take your own way with it. And then obviously if I do a workshop for you, be with me, get yeah. everybody there and we'll do it together. Perfect. And then you can learn it and do it on. But then there's another one which wasn't very good for me. So I'm gonna, I might get a bit wrong. You'll have to read it on paper. Is the yeah. painting effect. Okay. So if you was painting a wall, 
yeah, don't be a bit of gather, a massive wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you were painting it on your own and this is your life goals, how long is that paint going to take? Uh, painting going to take you? A long time. Right then. So you're at, yeah. Mm -hmm. So say that's now the end. Let's go back to the beginning. You had fifty painters and you met fifty one. Mm. How long is it going to take you to paint that wall? Less time. Right then. So a why? lot less. Right then. So when you look at people like me, and I'm going to put myself there, I've I have caused some problems in my life and some friends I'm not friends with me no more and they don't like to be around me they don't trust me no more do you think I'm going to beat them up on that and mm. or kick off with people so you'll find over years when you're painting a wall you keep saying no I don't need you oh mate you up with one painter and you've got, oh dude so I you're doing double time <laughs> so you're doing your own work then oh. you're trying to get back in life do you understand what I mean yeah we've got loads, loads of stuff like that that's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, honestly, things like that really catch Makes me. Makes me feel good because yeah. I think you're like no. educated better than me. Uh, no, all of Not us. Not horribly. No, like, we're, you know we're all in it together, aren't we? We've yeah. had different life experiences and then heard different metaphors and stories and all that. And that's yeah, if, you, if you're open to it, you're constantly in a state of learning rather than the one all knowing. And yeah, so yeah when, I want to be forever curious and yeah, forever so, learning. That's so beautiful. Is, yeah, yeah. So hence when people say like, oh, my family helped me and my two mates, the, the, I would say again, they're liars. Because if they've seeked help, if Sharon or Dale, just say they're the names, who are yeah. your counsellor, they deserve a shout out. Yeah. You I deserve a you shout out for me. You're right, I've got a lot of people behind the scenes, football wise, how many people have I played with yeah. on teams? They've all helped it this big to this big yeah micro like, macro scales this yeah, is yeah. A, amazing dude amazing so what are you going on to do with your life with your story with all the stuff and shit you've been through so ironically right yeah, yeah what you're saying is that out there you know i say come and do this little yeah uh, workshop a... something like that Brilliant. my my ultimate job would be if I could do it right now is be a youth club worker really yeah, yeah. I'll be working with you man we'll be doing some stuff I'd love I to promise do, I'd love this to is do fantastic that. yeah yeah, just, yeah I the... know it sounds sick and that sorry to put it yeah, but you know it sounds <laughs> sick and that but I'd love one day for one child or one man or one yeah. woman or you're just you or anyone yeah. just come up and can I have a hold please <laughs> say if I worked with you at workshops yeah okay are you okay like say no I just want to tell you that you're a massive help to me because I don't want it to come to me yeah. but I'm just saying as soon as I get that it's like you said earlier, how do you know that uh, something along the lines, how do you know you're doing all right, basically? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That'll be, that'll be my final cherry on the top. Yeah. Knowing full well, yeah, I'm not coming back down there. I, I promise you, the, the young gonna... people we're dealing with, they would resonate much more with you than some people that they get confronted with on a daily basis in education. Right. Completely different experiences, too far removed from them. And they've got this divide way too far they don't get me that like you went through in that counseling in that therapy they don't speak my language right. but meeting somebody like you that has had that opportunity now to process everything you've been through and decide to go on a better path from it that's the voices i want to put in front of them more yeah, often. that's absolutely fantastic i'll take you up on that uh, it's, it's a di uh, you've seen it on a podcast everybody no, no, mate, you wouldn't even say it, <laughs> would you no i'll definitely come and do what it, about mate. podcasting would you ever give that a will yourself like yeah yeah uh, yeah it, there's something that <laughs> Do you know what? Like, yeah, I would, but I think it take. I need to like, I don't know, say, go on this podcast, mm. come back a few months later, say, yeah. Sam, have you changed? What have you changed? What are you doing now? It's good that you're having check-ins with yourself, though. Because like, this is the first time I've ever sat in front of a camera. Well, mate, we've been doing is. about an hour 20 already, and you've just gone, oh, that's we've just, not stopped. That's it, isn't it? You've so just you are. You, you've been fantastic, mate. Nice um, yeah, again, men not talking. Yep. It must have taken you... A lot to go to like send that text message to me, yeah, 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 and to start this path of do you know what? I'm gonna own my shit and I'm gonna open up about my shit. Yeah, I said, I, I really applaud your vulnerability. How did you take that step? Can you remember your first? Was it with whiskey stain? Was, was it where you thought I'm gonna start talking? Yeah. What to get to me to this stage now? Yeah, yeah, what um, was just to get me out talking. And not get long winded back into another conversation, but um, yeah, I would say yeah, music were a massive, massive help. I mm. find that I could get away with music, that I could write stuff down. And if somebody said, "Why did you say that?" I'd say, "Oh no, ju I just needed something to make a wrap up." Ah, when did music end enter your life? What age? Oh, God, this is weird, right? Go on, Basically, stop yeah. this. Yeah, Kerry went to school with Rob. Yeah, Robinson, who does Whiskey Stain. He's my music producer. Yeah, we had a good Sick. Yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah, right. Sick. And we had a birthday party. And Kerry went out and sat on a curb. 
I was jealous back then, right, bad, with anyone. I walked out and said, who the fuck are you talking to? Uh-huh. Little yeah. being owns it rim. Find out I could rap. And he says, obviously, I don't want to listen to you now, mate. You've had a skin full. I'll come back tomorrow at quarter past 12. So I'm stood in my front garden at quarter past 12 and he's not here. It was 16 minutes past 10. I was like, oh, fucking kick off. And he went, hey, mate. And he went, yeah, and that's it. Straight from there. Wow. He took me in and then we did, a, it was pretty much like this. Like just a little mic and that. He put me on with a dictaphone and that and little fucking thingy and says, right, you say you freestyle, freestyle to this. And it was just basically a violin, um, raindrops going through a window with a car going by and then a little bit of a piano behind it. And I just rapped about my sister. Just sat there and spoke it. Wow. Do you understand what I mean? But back yeah. then I was like, yes, blood, you know what you said. I like. get you. Yeah, so I had that little bit of ego. Um, I just sat there and wrapped it. And then Rob from then said, nah, mate, we're just going to get used together and do it together. And then he were like, notice straight away that I do it through depression. Do you know what I mean? I'm not wanting to go jumping on stage. I'd love to do it, but I'm not going yeah. to do it. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, I don't think I'm that confident. Do you feel that is going to be ever in your story if you grow that confidence? Yeah, I think I will because yeah, I didn't yeah. think I'd, I didn't think I'd have confidence to come here and start spitting crap yeah, that's off. True. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to do. Do you know what I mean? When, when you think on it, I, I've got two eyes looking at me, but somebody's going to look at it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It feels like you're in the fuck it stage of your life, yeah, but yeah. in the best way, because I've seen people in the fuck it stage where they're just ruining their yeah, life because they, they, like, they, I don't care. But they, you're doing fuck it, let's yeah, have it. it yeah. <laughs> That's, honestly, have it in a good terms. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I am. That's where I've got to, <laughs> mate. Amazing. I swear to God, I that's it. where I've got it's to. Where great. I used to be scared of it once people to say, that. no, Sam, that I think, my opinion, that makes you look a cock. Just yeah. saying, a long term of blinds. You know what I mean? They don't mm-hmm. have to say that to me. <laughs> I was scared. Of, I was scared of like taking criticism. Now I can. You know what I mean? Why mm. do you feel like that? Do you mm. understand what I mean? Oh yeah, okay. And if I agree with it, I'll go home and try and change it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, I won't just fire back at them now and say fuck off. Mm. You know what I mean? You just have to, you have to because you just don't seem like you have to stand up for yourself as much because you're more assured of yourself now. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I feel real. like yeah. I had to like Are you fucking calling me or what? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like now, nah, n- yeah. Well, then you're looking over at other people, thinking, well, what effect do you really have on my life? Because the people that matter, that's who I'm playing toward. I'm and not some playing people are jealous, you. mate. Yeah. You know, people like do, I used that's... to think back at football. You know, at Codner and stuff like that. Not just Codner, other teams. Yeah. Not players who were my mates, but the army teammates. They used to take piss out me all the time, and I used to think. They got a great problem with me. Mm. Oh no, I know what it is. You just can't do what I can do. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. Little yeah, did yeah. that. Like I can put ball it back at net. You used it post and miss it every time when you're one on one or whatever. Yeah. But then they didn't know. I used to go home and think, oh, I wish I was strong as him. Mm. Yeah. I wish I could play a game like him. I just didn't voice it. I didn't make him feel idiots. Yeah. And so I mean, I I was actually generally thought I was in that team as I was their Arsenal. I was their gunner. <laughs> Without me, the yeah. I needed to be there. That's how I felt. Do you understand what I mean? That's why I got my five-year trophy. Uh, and I'm not bothered about what's going off. I used to be. I used to yeah. think, fucking hell, they don't like me. Right? But then when I sat home, I thought, nah, I'm proudest that I stayed at that club for five years, feeling like that, <clears throat> feeling not wanted, but not wanted at the same time. Mm. That was like another little, you can, Sam, you can do that, you know. Do, do you link this constant fear of not feeling wanted to you not having a dad in your life? Is that a factor? Yeah. Yeah, and also... And many others. Yeah, like my mum and all, innit? Yeah. Right, we clash with each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and stuff like that. Like. I get yeah. And it's one of them, innit? Oh, I'm always going to ask questions. I'll never, I'll never get answered because mum's not here. Do you know what I mean? I'm in one of them brackets now. Which, which then, when you get to that stage of I'm never going to know, it actually kind of alleviates it all, doesn't it? It puts it to the back because yeah. you're like, well, let's move then. Yeah, and that's where I've got now. Before, yeah, I was dwelling yeah. on it. Like, yeah, do you know oh, what I mean? Good word. I was sat good there word. dwelling and ruminating on it yeah. and going... Fucking uh, no, no, no. Now, like you say, fuck it in a polite, nice way. Yeah. The better way for me. That's where I've got. Yeah, fuck that shit. Brilliant. You know what I mean? Like, not fuck that shit. Keep that. I can't solve it. Yeah. So if I can't solve it, it's, it's, it beat me. Oh, it don't mean I'm a weak person. Mm. Just means I'm not not clever enough or everything. I just can't do that specific thing. Mm. Same as you, mate. You can run this gaff here. Mm-hmm. I can come and do it. One, I can come and work with you. Mm, I can you take will be. fucking do it seven days a week, mate, <laughs> and keep a nice smile like you can. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have some bad days, mate. We're gonna have to walk off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. who I am. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? But when I'm working, at least with you, you know yourself though. Yeah, and when I work with you in a workshop, come here. I'm just gonna be like this. I'm gonna be nice and happy and all that because yeah. I haven't got to put my hundred and ten percent every day of my life in it. Mm. When you get in a rut and doing something like that, that's when you find your main character. Yeah, who you real are getting up every day. Like you must. Your dad's a working man. Yeah, yeah. Honest working yeah, man and your mum. Yeah. And uh, work the bollocks off, yeah. There you go then. You, that's, one of their, that's one of their top three traits or five traits mm. that you give them. My mum and dad graft. 
Mm. Your dad, you can't tell me you've looked at your dad every day of his life and thought, he loves going to work. Mm. He loves this. Quite do you the ever, opposite, mate. Yeah, do you ever <laughs> sit there and think, is my dad sat there just in silence now? What's up with him? Mm. Maybe sometimes he just wants to sit in silence. Like, but like that. Yeah. It's like years and years ago, I bet your dad and like my granddad and stuff, like he was one of my heroes and stuff, they're, they're setting their own little standards. Mm. Not women cook and men work. Yeah. But that's what era it is. We're coming up in an era now, which is so harsh for young'uns, but also good for them. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we said about when we're making a drink about Marley, he's got to find his own way. Mm. He has got to find his own way. If I keep modicoddling him and wiping his arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? He's, yeah. It's going to be thingy, which I should have needed. It's a change of the times, isn't it? Yeah, that's mm. what I needed when I was a kid. I think we're all repositioning, reshuffling, recalibrating ourselves. And yeah, that's yeah. not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, there's been, again, yeah, you can look at any part of history and handpick the beautiful parts of it, where there's maybe more of a sense of community and da da da. But yeah, there's probably micro, there is micro traumas that have come from that as mm. well and been passed down through ge generation and generation. So. Yeah, it's a great conversation though, man. I, I know, love it. it. I love like... it. It's good to just always be introspective and reflect. Yeah, it's yeah. a great thing. It's been nice, been nice to talk. I've loved I mean? this, dude. I'm yeah. really glad you sent that message, yeah, and I'm really I'm proud annoyed. of you. Genuinely, I'm oh, really very much. really proud of you for doing it because it does take bollocks oh. and just open up, telling your story. So, mate, I've got a oh, lot of love for you. Let me go. Oh, honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, we'll cry together. Like Two men on the back of a bus <laughs> having a cry. Yes, I like it. <laughs> That's what we're about, mate. Open yeah. up, honest, authentic stories, and you should be proud of yourself, man. I am. Do you know a young person, maybe any person listening to yeah. this, um, I'm imagining off a male, really, because yeah, like, okay. it's been quite a lot of masculine yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. here. If they wanted to get in touch with you and just say, dude, I resonate with so much of what you were saying. Yep. Can I have a chat? Where could they find you? The best place to find but, you? Social uh, media? Yeah, social media. Best Don't stop putting your number up on here. You no, I'm not putting no number up. <laughs> no, no, nothing like What's that. What's your Facebook? Uh, Facebook is uh, Sam Tambo McDowell. Sam Tambo McDowell. Yeah. Brilliant. And you're open to people yeah, yeah, coming yeah. in and just saying, dude, I'd yeah, love to chat with you Yeah, because even though they might it. ask me questions and ask me about stuff, I might be able to be having a conversation with somebody where actually they might actually help me out. Yeah. And with something that I'm struggling with to come to terms with. Do you understand what I mean? So I am a big believer that people are in stages and people get better with depression, Mikey. But mm. I also understand that until you've gone through it and finished it, you've not yeah. you've, that's that's step one. You got you you've processed yeah, and we're all you're ready to here. Yeah, open about it. Mate, I think a lot of people are going through life in quite desperation and they may have just listened to this yeah, and yeah. that's enough for them. Or they may want to reach out and talk to you, but I know Brilliant. somebody who's got to this point in the podcast has been helped in some way, and yeah, that's yeah. because of you just coming and sharing. So, and even if even really if it's nobody it. else, even though I know it probably is, even if it is, I've been helped today because yeah. this has helped me. Me too, dude. Yeah, exactly. I love so it. Too. Yeah. I love it. I really do. So I'll do my bit. Guys, you've been a part of the old farm bus, back of the bus sessions podcast. I'm going to leave you on this. I always do, and I always will. Just be nice to one another. You're a beautiful set of buggers. Sam, you're a great human. Thank Big you. Big love.